Hey, it's Wolfie Chan, and I'm going to be doing something a little different. But wait, 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 wait. Have you subscribed? Cause like half of you are not subscribed, and like you like my content at least enough. Subscribe. You'll watch something else. Promise. All right. So this is a totally different video that I've never really done before, and it is a deep dive. This is coming from a comment that I had on my last review of Kami Kiss. It brought up questions about the anime and all that good stuff, which I love you guys to comment. I love when you guys explain stuff in the comments. Definitely helps me, even paragraphs explaining definitely helps. Please don't leave links to anybody else's videos and stuff like that. It feels like you're losing focus on my stuff and focusing on somebody else. It's a little worrying because if you're here to see me, I'd like you to be here to see me. So they brought up a lot of stuff that they didn't know about or needed more clarification. And I'm guessing in the YouTube community, we don't have a deep down clear explanation for a lot of things in Kami Samakis. This is mostly going to go over some parts of the anime and some parts of the manga, which I do believe if you want to get a full explanation of both the manga and the series and the brilliant Kami Samakis. You might need to watch all of that and read back the whole series. So this is going to be a brief overview over the characters, the past of the characters, the present and our future that is in the realm of this series. So this is going to be more of a deep dive type of a thing. And I even put up a PowerPoint. I did research because I care. We're going to go and start from the beginning of the series. And I mean the very, very beginning of the series. Where we have Nanami meet uh, Mikage's? Mikaji? I'm not amazing with names. I probably will never be amazing with names, and this series has names galore. I do my best to try and say them, but I'm a little iffy. And if you don't like how I say it, I'm sorry. It's just how I say the names of characters. Alright, we're gonna start with Nanami herself, the wonderful character that she is. And I'm gonna look at my screen periodically because I did put the notes there. So, one, she starts off just as a normal character. I don't know how much I didn't realize it as I was going through the series that she is just a normal student. She's going to high school, going along with her life. Her life starts off with gambler dad. Dad's a gambler. He spends all the money no matter what and I doubt he ever looks or sees Nanami. In fact, in the whole series we never get to meet him at all. We also find out through kind of off saying that Nanami's never really met her mom or really talked about her because Nanami's mom died of a mysterious illness and she's gone now. So we don't get to see her, meet her, or anything like that. Nanami unfortunately lives, you know, in, in a, I would say a cheap Japanese apartment where she gets kicked out of it. And I believe the person who was the tenant, like the person overseeing it, landlord. Like, would try and push it off so much for Nanami to try and make enough money to live. And I think she just, he or she, gave up on them and was just like, I'm sorry, you need to go. Which ends up leaving Nanami on the streets in a park, where she meets Mikage, Mikaji, the shrine god of our story. And of course, he randomly is up a tree with a dog. And he's screaming for help, everything. Like a person in the night who doesn't know what the creature is and finds out it's a dog but isn't a fan of dogs. So of course, our sweet Nanami saves him. Completely, utterly, doesn't matter. She's happy to help anybody. Even if her situation is terrible, she wants to help no matter what. And for her efforts, Makage doesn't only just give her a home to live in and a house to live in, she gives, or he gives her, godhood. 
basically like a little symbol or orb, both in the anime and kind of in the manga, into her forehead, basically, that says, you're a god, but she's still human. Giving her godhood and a shrine. Doesn't realize until she sees her home that it is a shrine. And he ends up, like, disappearing, because I'm guessing either he wanted a vacation or for other reasons. That's when we meet Tomoe, or Tome. We meet, oh goodness, Onikiru, Onikiri, and Koke Tets. And they are all familiars to the god of the shrine, which just happens to be her. And of course, what leads up into the future is the love of Tomoe. By the way, did I mention this is spoilers? This is all going to be spoilers. This is a deep dive in the series. If you've never read, watched, seen anything Kamisama Kiss, this will ruin it in a sense. I watch things about like games and other books that I like and I don't mind them getting spoiled because I will continue to read the series or see the series myself. So I don't mind it if you're like me and you're still going to read the series because I might miss a little tic tac or something like that. Definitely be that. Definitely watch it. Definitely. So there is a secret love of Tomoe and it's not very secret as the series goes on. Next of course is Tomoe. He is a yokai and the biggest or main familiar to the shrine. And when he finds out that his master has decided to give godhood to Natami, he's like, I, you're not my master anymore. You're actually, you're not my master. Later. And decides to go into the yokai world itself. And is just like, no, I'm just going to stay here being the fox demon that I am. Which yokai is loosely defined as a demon. It's not all demons and it's not all weird spirits. It's just kind of the other side creatures, I would say. So he begins very selfishly, doesn't want anything to do with anybody except for the old shrine god. And the new one, nah, nah, it doesn't matter. Well, she goes, our sweet Nanami, goes into that realm to get Tomoe back. Ends up kind of in a jumble where people are trying to get her because godhood's implanted into a human. This is really weird. So after finding Nanami, Tomoe's like, I can help, I guess. And after helping, she ends up sealing him as her familiar so that he can't use his powers against anybody unless she asks it. Thus, the relationship of familiar and god-master person begins. Tomoe has an inherent hatred for humans in the beginning. He can't stand humans, he can barely stand Nanami, and knowing that she ends up going back to school bugs him a lot. Which, I believe that in the beginning her dad did sign her into high school, and then kind of left. Because you need some sort of family registry to go into high school, I believe. Japan's schooling is a bit different, so I can only assume that going to school and everything like that is just linked to family registry and you don't necessarily have to have your family register you for school unlike at least in the USA where you register your kid with your child to the school that they want to go to. Elementary school, middle school, and high school. And of course he purely hates Nanami. He really does in the beginning of their life. He can barely stand it, sees that she barely eats, barely takes care of the shrine, and ends up taking that role. Feeding her, cleaning the shrine, and make sure it's good. Which the shrine is kind of in shambles because not a lot of people pray to this god. Which he's not a god of wealth, it's a god of matchmaking and love in a sense, but of minor love, not huge love I guess. His godhoodness is, was really weird to try and look for, and we manga and mangas again, it seems like he is the god of 
simple romantic relationships in a sense. So Nanami is the god of simple relationships. Well, if people are already in a relationship or broken in a relationship, they're not really gonna come to this god shrine often. So she lives off of the donations of the shrine. He was originally friends with, oh goodness, Akura U? That's probably not how you say it at all. But he was, and still is, a friend of Tomoe in a sense. In the past. We'll go over that in the future, but he, he was once a friend of his. And now their relationship is a bit iffy. And I mean extremely iffy. I'll get to the character later and all that good stuff. He, in the past, also fell in love with Yukiji. I believe that's how you say her name. A little iffy. And I put in quotation Tanami because you find out that the person he actually fell in love with in the past wasn't Yukiji. And Yukiji doesn't really have the feelings towards him that he has for the actual person he's in love with, which isn't her. He just thinks it's her because Nanami and Yukiji look exactly the same. Funny enough, as a kind of spoiler, Yukiji is actually the great-great-grandmother of Nanami. So a few greats, I don't know how far, but they are actually related by blood. And Tomoe has a curse put on him because he went to a fallen god who was supposed to make him human. And the fallen god only exists technically in the past. He no longer exists in the present or future. We will get to that more in said future. We're going over Mizuki, which if you see a little bit of a jump, my program was being a little bit testy. So, Mizuki is our snake familiar, who was a familiar of a shrine that ended up kind of collapsing. Nobody started praying to the god that was a god that was created by the people, for the people, and once the people thrived and were finally okay, they stopped needing this goddess. And once a god leaves a shrine, the shrine basically dies and breaks up. And our sweet Mizuki is still in there and ends up seeing Nanami because Nanami is looking for something and instantly falls in love with her. And of course ends up stealing her back into the shrine and all this good stuff. And of course our Tomoe ends up going to help her and getting her out of there where she feels sad for Mizuki and ends up basically claiming him as her familiar. He is a beautiful white snake, as Tomoe is a beautiful white fox. Just as a comparison. Now, Mizuki can easily make great sake, like the best sake, only for the gods. And at one point in time, I believe Nanami does drink like a little of it, Finds out it's really good, but it's still only for the gods, so she kind of gets a little drunk. But they end up, Mizuki ends up giving the sake to Komomura. And Tomoe, who gets terribly drunk off of it, will get to Komomura, or Komomura, in a bit. He also has the incense burner that sends Nanami into the past. Now I looked everywhere and nobody has credited our sweet little snake familiar with the incense burner, which he does this to one, show Nanami that she is in fact in love with Tomoe, no matter what era or time, but also to help her out in different situations, which the incense burner might have been Mikade, Mikaji. Might have been the old gods in San Burner. It's kind of weird because it links to both of them in a sense. But he's the one that starts off with the Incense Burner and showing Nanami the past. 
He also stays at the shrine after Nanami decides to leave and go on with her life with Tomoe. That is once again more that we will explore in the future. But it's really sad his backstory that he had his goddess. He was more than happy to serve her, be with her, help her out and everything. And then she decides, or really doesn't decide, she just disappears because she's dying because her shrine's no longer being prayed to. And I believe it's underneath a lake, so you can't pray to a god in water. It's not possible. And so it's really sad because he still misses her, he still would like to be around her and with her, and just can't. It is really sad. Well, now we're going to go over a few of the major other characters in the franchise. So any of the gods or any of the kings or spirits that we end up talking to with Nanami. First up is Kurumara? Kurumara. Kurumara. Not great with it. His whole little stint in the human world is being a fallen angel and he's been sent from heaven and cast out to be this kick butt rock singer. Uh, no, actually, he's a Tengu. And he got kicked out of his Tengu village. And being kicked out of the Tengu village isn't really great. His actual father was the chief of the Tengu. And because his father ended up being sick and couldn't be the chief anymore, Jiro, who is now the chieftain of the Tengu, has kicked him out because he would go and see people in the real world and the Tengu are a very hidden society. You do not enter the Tengu village or the Tengu mountain or wherever they are at all unless you are requested to, unless you are put into that world, unless you fall in love with the Tengu from a mountain and become their bride. And of course women go hiking and stuff like that, so of course they end up getting taken into the village, whether they know it or not, to end up either marrying or being with Tengu to have Tengu children. The main question was how do you get more Tengu children in the comment, and I believe that's how it is. If you are not a Tengu's wife, because a special Tengu in the anime made a comment and technically does make a comment in the manga that he can't look at Nanami when Nanami is in the shrine. Why? Because I'm not dating you, you're not my wife, and you are not carrying my children. It's kind of more of a sacred thing that I would relate to being a Muslim, where if you're in a room with women, you get to reveal who you are and you get to show that, or you don't get to wear the hijar and the outfit with your family. Your family may get to take that off and you get to show yourself with your family or with females around you. You don't get to show yourself to any other man in the culture out of respect. And I believe that's the same with the Tengu. You do not look at somebody else's wife or girlfriend or person they are going to have a child with because you are not intimate with them. So they don't have large amounts of children they have a few and somebody ends up taking care of them. So either the female goes back into the real world living her life or she ends up helping them as much as she can from the outside world or lives with them kind of in a hidden room where she doesn't get to meet a lot of the other 10 new males. That is what I've gotten from a lot of the manga and from the anime that yes, they do reproduce with females. It's just you don't see a lot of them because they're in the real world or they're somewhere else in the compound that only women get to be. So that's why you don't see female Tengu. I don't believe or I don't know fully in the yokai history of Tengu if there were ever female Tengu. I know that people draw them and I know that in a certain anime and manga series uh, XX Inu Boku, there is a female Tengu. I don't know if they were common or if it happened a lot. There's a lot of anime series that only show male Tengu. 
and they are female brides that go with the Tengu. And they are hidden or they end up getting sick a lot from other enemies. So he is a singer, he's very popular, everyone knows him, and he ends up becoming a student at Nanami's school. And everyone fawns over him except Nanami. Nanami doesn't care. He ends up having like a I love Nanami thing as well, but slowly ends up falling for her friend Ami. Uh, he does at one point try to get the godhood out of her, which I believe they do once when he goes back up to the village to show like I am now a god and people you know, do this and that, where they meet Jiro, the new chieftain, who also falls in love with Nanami. And falling in love with Nanami, you get fun stuff, like being with Nanami, being around her, and getting to talk with her. So it's pretty adorable. Then, you have kind of where he's helping her out as often as he can, because one, he's a singer, and two, he's a Tengu, so he can go into the spiritual realm and can be on the outside. But he ends up building a lot of relationship and feelings for Ami over the time of the manga. And he only fully kind of admits to wanting to be with her and seeing her again is actually in the final volume of the manga when he comes back from the Tengu mountain because he wanted to help everybody up there. So... And that is the, he admits his feelings for Ami in the end, because in the very last volume, he comes back to her in the end. So he ends up falling out of love with Ami to fall in love with Ami. And they do have a lot of connections, and they do talk a lot, and they do have just that cute camaraderie. It's adorable. Next one is Hime Mikoto? Miko? Kime Miko Oof. of the swamp. She is a princess of this kind of swampy lake area. And she requests, I believe, she either requests or goes and sees the god of the shrine for relationships. It is Nanami. And Nanami instantly falls in love with her and definitely wants to help her out. And it's just, uh, oh, it's the cutest thing. When we see Hime, the first time she is in her fish form, it's not incredibly adorable, but she is sweet and admits that she's fallen in love with a kid. It's weird because he was a little kid, she saved him from drowning and has fallen in love with him and now that he's an adult, she wants to be with him. And of course, Nanami instantly in love, instantly wants to help. Tomoe, on the other hand, is like, no, you're going to live a millennia. He's only going to live for this short time. Are you really sure about this? You're never going to be a human to be with him. So what are you doing? With a lot of fighting and a lot of deliberation, Tomoe ends up helping her to have a human disguise to end up being with Kutaru. Or Kutaru. If I remember right, I hear her voice and it's Kutaru. And of course, at one point in time in the series, her illusion starts to break and she's freaking out that he will not love her without the illusion. Well, sweetly enough, he admits that he loves her no matter what after knowing her, being with her, and feeling who she is. Ends up still getting the illusion back, but is happy enough to be with her no matter what. And they're just... They are the cutest couple. They really are. It's awesome. Also, she's supposed to be marrying a prince of another lake or another ocean and should be marrying him. I tried to find his name and my manga is not readily available to me fully, but I remember that he tried to fight with the boy. And ends up, Kotaro does come and save her. And the prince is like, at the end of the whole excursion, is like, I didn't really want to marry her anyway, so this is cool. And Hime is just happy that Kotaro really wanted to save her from this. It's adorable. She's extremely happy being 
Nanami's one very good friend and two somebody to help her with anything that she can and it is adorable next one is the dragon king of i believe the eastern sea it's one of the seas and we meet him when we meet him a couple times we meet him in the past with tomoe trying to get his sacred elixir of immortality or longevity he does that to try and give Yukiji more life because he wants to be with her, with her forever, not realizing who his actual love is. Go figure. His wife, Kamei Hime, just adores and is best friends with Nanami, loves her, wants to help her no matter way. He, on the other hand, eternally hates Tomoe for breaking into his castle to get that elixir for 526 years. Vengeance is sweet, I guess the longer it is. And he is perpetually terrified of his wife that he loves immensely, so he will do anything that she says. They end up actually all being friends together and visiting each other on land, and it's really sweet. He ends up losing an eye, though, to Tomoe in the fight. That's why he's more angry, I believe. Now, our kind of main enemy of the story, in a sense, is Akuro O. He is a very powerful demon. Very powerful. I believe he's actually a god that people pray to for destruction and death and to kill enemies and all that good stuff. So I believe he's a god of war. And of course, Tomoe being Tomoe in the past, didn't like humans. So of course his best friend was this guy. Well, he doesn't like Yukiji and doesn't like that Tomoe is falling in love with a human woman. So he tries everything with Tomoe to get him to understand she's not the best, she's not worth it, cut it out, no. It doesn't work. And in the end, he stops getting prey to because war stops happening. On his verge of death in the mountain that he's on, lays a kid who I believe is Tomeki? I don't fully saw his name, remember him. But he ends up taking the body of a child that is about to die, who is about the same age as Nanami, and ends up using that as the body to get revenge and fight and all that good stuff with Tomoe and Nanami having his oh goodness what is it Yato, Yatori basically his nickname is Furball because he wanted to help Akura Akuri or Akura he wanted to help him the best way he could everyone was just like you're too tiny you're not worth it he ends up eating another spirit who's bigger to help him out, which the downfall of that is that he tries a lot to eat Akura. And because Akura's body is human, he ends up dragging Nanami places that she shouldn't. That we will get into the present part of the manga series. Just know Akura really hates Yukiji and ends up hating Tomoe for leaving him as a best friend. Who'd have thought? Oh, oh, did we... Yep. Past, present, and future. This is now getting more to the heart of the story where we're going over time travel, people's perception of time, and how everyone felt. Of course we're starting with the past. Nanami frequently goes to the past in the books, uh, I would say almost every three or four, like, manga uh, volumes. So she does end up going regularly, and that's where she meets Yukiji, and Yukiji is terrified of a demon that keeps trying to find her. Well, of course, stuff inevitably happens that isn't great. First time that Nanami is in Yukiji's body, she ends up running into like this dingy cabin place 
for our demons about to attack her until Tomoe finds her. Tomoe finds her weak and funny, and Nanami, knowing that it's Tomoe, is dictating a lot of stuff. In the end, Tomoe stays with her and protects her enough, and in the morning, Nanami runs back home to help the kids out, and Tomoe is left kind of feeling something. The next time, Nanami is in her own body meeting Yukiji. Well, Yukiji is supposed to go on a wedding kind of haul to the temple, or I believe the castle that she's going to marry this lord to. And they need somebody else because a demon has weirdly been following Yukiji. Well, that's where Nanami takes up the position for Yukiji and ends up getting captured by Tomoe. Well, the real Yukiji is getting married. And ends up forming more of a love and a relationship with Nanami. And ends up really wanting to be with her. The next time we meet in the past, I believe it's Nanami watching. And Nanami watches while Yukiji is kind of on her dying legs. She doesn't have a lot to live for. She doesn't have long for this world. He breaks into the castle to give her the elixir. She doesn't want it. She's already had a full life. She has a child. And she has a man that she had fallen in love with, which was the Lord. Tomoe is trying everything to get Yukiji to understand that he wants to be with her forever. So he inevitably tries to become human by the fallen god. And he the cursed final god, or fallen god, curses him to have the lifespan of his immortal, of his mortal lover. While the curse is a little finicky, he doesn't fully die, he's just cursed with these black marks that fall all over him. While uh, Mikage comes, sees him like this, and ends up rescuing him, finding out that his love maybe it wasn't the love that he was really looking for. And ends up getting him to be his familiar and ends up wiping his memory. So that the curse is basically at a stalemate. If he doesn't acknowledge the curse, it's not really there at this point. Well, as time goes on, he totally forgets and becomes the Tomoe we know. He ends up giving up on Yukiji and not remembering who she was at all. In fact, having somebody tell him, like, you remember Yukiji? And he's like, who? And he totally forgets everything just living with Makage in the life. Until we meet Nanami, who becomes the student and the god that we know, going through adventures to castles, lakes, anything to help a friend out. In fact, at one point in time, she goes up to do her godly duties with like, oh, this is how much shrine I did, uh, these how many people that, you know, pray to me. She doesn't have a big shrine like the rich wealth gods are the gods of knowledge. And so she ends up getting that fully done and just kind of hanging around, meeting the gods of war, the gods of wealth, the gods of sleep, and everything else and getting her godhood taken at one point in time till she shows that she's worthy and Makage basically points out to the goddess I did this for to her for a reason now give it back and she helps out a lot of people along the way she helps her friends she helps in her school she helps a lot of people understand stuff she even helps Akura O when he ends up going to the underworld and trying to prolong his life and you see the spirit of the woman who was the body's mother and sees that when he came back from the snow he treated her very meanly and all that stuff but she still loved her son no matter what that she became a spirit to help him out as much as she could well akura's life is damaged because He's a fallen god. 
he is basically now kind of like the cursed god of the mountain, but in a different sense. Meaning the body's life is basically getting drawn and cut year after year. He doesn't have long to live. When Nanami follows him down and goes through everything, sees what he's been going through, sees the woman who loves the body, she ends up giving her half of her life to him. And he runs off, of course. And she ends up staying with the goddess of Yoma, or Yomi, goddess of the darkness, who looks like Ami. Exactly. And she's like, I can postpone your life as long as you stay here. But if you don't stay here, you're going to die. She ends up doing that, and Tomoe cannot take that. He cannot take it at all. He cannot take the person he's in love with is going to die sooner than he's planning to. In the end, her life force gets put back, and the curse inevitably reactivates, and he goes through a lot of stuff because it's Yukichi he's in love with. Well, she's dead. No, Tomoe. The person you fell in love with was Nanami. And Nanami is right here. The curse breaks. They are in love with each other. They admit it to each other, both yokai and human, that they love each other. Well, with a lot of gods' help, they end up turning Tomoe into a human. And, you know, with all the help with the Tengu and the Dragon King and everybody else that she's had to help with, it gives her to the future. Not of me graduates high school and goes on to uh, work and live her life as such. She gives up her godhood and Tomoe is human, fully human to live the rest of his life with his bride, Nanami. Which is funny because we've seen a part where they go through the gates of the new year and Tomoe tells little Nanami that at one point in time she's gonna get married and it's gonna be him. And it's the cutest thing. He ends up marrying Nanami and they end up having a child together. She's staying at home, him doing a work as a salary man and still being a little bit like sny, but more of a good person. They go to Mikage's shrine every so often, see everybody that they've ever cared for, sees of course Mizuki, our little snake boy, being now the familiar of that shrine, and he gets to watch the person that he loves aging and inevitably dying. But he doesn't mind that since now he is this shrine god's familiar. And they're all, I like that I spelled happy and I guess happy just stopped there. They all live happily ever after with everything being fully cemented, that her lifespan is the way it should be, that she's going to raise her kid, telling them stories about everything that's happened. And that, my friends, no matter how long this video is, is the deep dive of Kami-sama Kiss. I may have missed a few things here and there, but they are like miniature stories, like the mermaid woman that they had to get the robe from, and of course promising to see her every so often, or the trips with the school and going from here and there, or Nanami getting sick and instead of losing time at school, having Tomoe turn into her and go to school, which is an often occurrence. Especially when she's doing more godhood stuff. All these little details are things that I loved, but didn't fill out the full story or many questions about anything like that. Of course, when you see Tomoe kind of act like Nanami, everything's a little bit different. He does mean things to Koroma, and it's just, it's all around funny. This series is near and dear to my heart, and I very much love this series. It is very much a worth to read and do it yourself. This deep dive was more for anybody who had a lot of questions about Kamisama Kiss that might have wanted answers. And if you want me, 
in all my library of anime or manga that I have read. If you need a deep dive about another series, definitely tell me in the comment section below and tell me why in some explanation why you need a deep dive of it. It helps, like, get me to understand which part of the series needs to be explained more and why it should be important to do a deep dive on. So, if you like this video, definitely leave a like. Leave it in the comment section below if you enjoyed this, if you got to understand more of Kami-sama Kiss. Kami-sama Kiss? And definitely tell me with all those comments a more explanation so I can understand your point of view. It'll help me and I will understand you a little bit more. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like, and don't forget to follow me on Facebook or Twitter for anything. I hope that you've been having a wonderful day. Wolfie Chan out. Bye. <laughs>